Hello and welcome to Watch Releases Recap for the week of April 19th until April the 26th. Let's begin with Maurice Lacroix and their new Icons Automatic bronze model. Maurice Lacroix is not a very popular brand here in North America, but it is a lot more popular in Asia. They have some pretty cool looking watches and I try to cover new releases on the show whenever I see them. This one here particularly caught my eye because I really like the look of this watch. Of course, as the name would suggest, it comes in a bronze case. And usually I personally am not a huge fan of bronze cases, but for whatever reason, I think on this watch, it looks really cool. The bronze case also pairs very nicely with this sort of chocolate gradient dial. And it's of course a textured dial. If you know a thing or two about watches, clearly this is sort of inspired by the AP Royal Oak, but I think it has enough of its own character not to be confused with just another homage. There is a date at the three o'clock position. Too bad the date wheel is not color matched to the background of the dial, but that's okay. I also like the applied indexes. I like the minimal writing on the dial and these watches come on the leather strap. Now, in terms of the sizing, I think it's pretty reasonable, 42 millimeter case diameter. They're about 11 millimeters in case thickness, which is not bad at all, especially for an automatic watch with the Celita SW200 movement. This movement, of course, is a high beat movement beating at 28,800 vibrations per hour, and it has 38 hours of power reserve. This model is not going to be added to the standard catalog. It's a limited edition to 888 pieces. Eight is a popular number in Asian culture. And as I said, Maurice Lacroix is a more popular brand in Asia. So I guess that's why they did 888 for the limited edition. And these watches are priced at 2,400 Swiss francs, which is about what, 2,600 US dollars. I think the price is fairly reasonable for what you get. The new Orient Star M34 F8 models. Orient watches need no introduction. A lot of watch enthusiasts know and have owned these watches in the past. Orient Star is sort of a higher tier version of Orient watches. Think of it as a Grand Seiko to Seiko. Now Orient Star, they range in prices. Some are multi-thousand dollar watches and some are around a thousand dollars. Well, now there are two new models added to this Orient Star lineup. The two dial versions, the blue one and the sort of silver creamy one are both inspired by Meteor showers. I don't really see it to be honest, maybe on the blue one a little bit, but on the silver one, I don't see Meteor showers, but maybe I just don't have the eye for these things. In fact, I'm gonna put my cards on the table I am not a huge fan of the way these watches look. In my opinion, the power reserve indicator by the 12 o'clock position throws off the symmetry of this dial. Also, the date will cut out at the three o'clock position. Kind of looks odd. I don't know why, but it sort of cheapens the look of the watch for me. I know a lot of people love this look and they love this design. And it's not to say that you're wrong. It's just not for me. Both versions come in the same case. It's a stainless steel case, 40 millimeters in case diameter, 47.3 millimeters lock to lock distance, and they're about 13 millimeters in case height. I've never actually held an Orient Star watch of this caliber in my hand, but from what I hear, the finishing on these cases and the bracelets is really good. I mean, Japanese watch companies usually know how to finish a case. In terms of the movement, these ones are powered by the Orient in-house caliber F8N64. This movement is not a high bit movement, beating at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It has 60 hours of power reserve, and it's rated to about plus 15 minus five seconds per day. It's not awful, but I think it could be a little bit better, especially for watch in this price category. These watches are about 3000 US dollars. Luckily for us, but kind of unluckily for Orient Star, these watches usually go on the secondary market for a way lower price. I've seen gray market dealers sell models like this for about 50% off of MSRP. So at about $1,500, I think it's a lot more reasonable. At $3,000, I don't know. Even the dials, they kind of look like they're hand finished, but they're actually not. The molds are hand finished or hand created, and then the dials are all stamped. So they all have exactly the same pattern. Uh, so I don't exactly know why these watches are so expensive. I guess Orient Star is trying to break into this sort of higher price category. So they're starting to introduce this 
more expensive models. The new Omega Speedmaster 38 models in full gold and stainless steel. Omega Speedmaster 38 is not the most popular model that Omega offers. I think it's tailored towards women. So you sort of go into Omega store and you buy his and hers. You would buy maybe a Moonwatch and this Speedmaster 38. As the name would suggest, they feature a 38 millimeter case diameters. Now, 38 millimeters doesn't sound that small, but I think, and I'm not sure because I'm no expert on ladies' fashion trends, but I think the trend is for women to wear slightly larger watches. So that's why these have been so popular with the ladies. Essentially, it's the same model with a slightly updated movement and uh, sort of diamonds on the bezel. That is the big difference. So now they come in the gold variations. There's the Canopus gold. There's also the other gold that Omega makes. They all come with diamonds and they're all very fancy schmancy. There's also the stainless steel version also comes with diamonds. And again, I just wanted to highlight these watches because I feel like I'm not highlighting enough ladies watches, although a lot of my audience is male. Maybe some ladies out there are watching. So hey, this one I think is tailored more towards you. Now these are not cheap watches. The stainless steel version with diamonds is 17,400 euros on the strap and 17,800 euros on the bracelet. The gold versions are priced at $34,000 on the strap and $46,400 on the gold bracelet. So yeah, quite a bit of money, but the good news is that the old versions are still available. So if you don't like this diamond, studded versions you can just go for one of the other ones in stainless steel that are way cheaper the zodiac super wolf with in-house gmt movement zodiac is one of these vintage companies that went out of business for a bit due to quartz crisis now they're back re-releasing some of their iconic models plus creating some new models uh, i think now they're owned by fossil group i actually reviewed one of these c wolf gmt models a while ago and I quite like the watch. I think for what they are, they are very reasonably priced. But what I didn't know is that Zodiac actually makes their own in-house GMT movement, which is pretty crazy. And even with this in-house movement, I think the watches are still super reasonably priced. So currently there are two new versions available with this in-house movement. One is with this pink and white bezel and a black dial. The other one is with the gray and black bezel and white dial. I prefer this one over the pink bezel one. I also think that the sizing is very reasonable, 40 millimeters case diameter, but 13.2 millimeters case thickness. So not too bad. And as I mentioned, the best part about these watches is the pricing. They're about 1700 US dollars, which is not bad at all, especially once again for an in-house GMT movement. Now I'm not too familiar with these movements, they're called the STP 7-20 GMT Automatic Movement. I tried to search them up online, but I couldn't find too much information. So maybe somebody else who is more familiar with movements can leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how reliable these movements are and if it's even worth buying a watch like this or maybe go for something with an established GMT movement. The new Rado Captain Cook high-tech ceramic skeleton. Last year, we got exactly the same watch as this one, but in a gray case. Now this year, we got the olive green case. These watches are pretty cool because they're made out of ceramic with a ceramic bezel. You don't see that often. Usually ceramic cased watches come on straps because ceramic bracelets are not the easiest to create. In terms of the case dimensions, they're about 43 millimeters in diameter, about 50 millimeters like to like distance, and about 14.6 millimeters in case height. They do feature 300 meters of water resistance, as well as a display case back, and of course they feature these skeletonized dials. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of skeletonized dials. I mean, if it's done really well, and if the movement is worth looking at, then yes, in my opinion, on this watch, this Rado Caliber R808 is not a really beautiful movement to look at. So I'm not a huge fan of the skeletonized version, but hey, to each their own. As you would imagine with these exotic materials, these watches are not cheap. They come at around 5,000 US dollars. So at that price point, you really have to love this watch and want a ceramic case, ceramic bracelet diver. And if you're in a market for one of these, well, hey, there is a new option available. Christopher Ward, the 12 
skeleton watch. If you're watching this video, you probably don't need an introduction to Christopher Ward. They have a pretty solid reputation in watch industry. They sort of offer these luxury like watches at more affordable prices. This new model is cool for several reasons. Number one, it features their own in-house movement, which is pretty cool, but it, it's a skeletonized version of their in-house movement caliber SH21. It's a COSC certified movement with 120 hours of power reserve. In order to fit this larger skeletonized movement, they actually had to make the standard 12 case larger by about a millimeter. So these ones come in a 41 millimeter case. They also are a bit thicker than the standard 12. These ones are about 12.3 millimeters in case thickness. But of course, these watches are feather light because they come in titanium cases. On the bracelet, it's about 4,900 US dollars. And on the strap, it's about 4,500 US dollars. So yeah, quite a bit of money. And that's it. That's the video. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought about the Christopher Ward and all the other releases that I mentioned earlier. I always enjoy reading your comments. Also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.